So we now encountered four representations of the group SU2. There was a 0, 1, 2 and a 3 dimensional representation. And we've claimed that there are irreducible representations of every complex dimension. So we'd like a way of constructing new representations out of old representations. In other words, if I give you a representation R on a vector space V, so map R from G to GLV, and a representation S from the same group to GLW, V and W are two different vector spaces, how can we construct more representations starting from these guys? Okay, well, we already know one way of doing this, which is the direct sum. R and then plus with a circle around it, S. So this is a representation of G on the vector space V direct sum W, which is the vector space whose basis is given by taking a basis of V, a basis of W, and using both bases. It's the dimension is dimension of V plus dimension of W. What is the representation? Well, R uh, plus S of G is the block matrix RG, 0, 0, SG. Now this is no use for us because we're trying to construct irreducible representations and this is never going to be an irreducible representation unless one of these two guys is the zero representation. Why is that? Well, because RG, no, so R is always a sub-representation or S is always a sub-representation. So it's definitely not irreducible. So that's no good for us. What other ways do we have of constructing new representations? Well, there's another funny symbol, which is a times sign with a circle round called a tensor product. R tensor S. So we can construct a representation, R tensor S, and the vector space on which this representation lives is V tensor W. Well, what is this vector space V tensor W? Well, it's easiest to define by giving a basis. There's a much more formal definition, uh, but the easiest thing to do is to say, let's pick a basis of V, E1 up to EM. Let's pick a basis of W, F1 up to FN. And then let's use the following symbols as a basis for our new vector space. So EI tensor FJ. This will be a basis of V tensor W as I ranges from 1 to M and J ranges from 1 to N. So this will be M times N dimensional. So the vectors in this vector space are things like E1 tensor F1 or um, E1 tensor F2 minus a half E3 tensor F5, that kind of thing. So those are now vectors in our vector space. So what is the representation? Well, I need to tell you how R tensor S of G acts on vectors in this vector space. I should tell you how it acts on all possible vectors, in other words, all linear combinations of these basis elements, but because it's a matrix, I just need to tell you what it does to the basis. So I need to tell you what it does to EI tensor FJ, or more generally to any vector of the form little v tensor little w. So that's what I'll do. So what does it do? Well, there's only really one thing we can write down. We know how R of G acts on V. By hypothesis, we, we've, we've been given R. And we know how S of G acts on W. So we just let R, G act on V, let S, G act on W and tensor them together. And now it's possible this is a, a sum of elements. It doesn't have to be just one vector anymore, one basis element anymore. And so we, we use this tensor product and sort of multiply out the brackets using the tensor product. Um, so we'll do an example. 
let's take um, R equal to S and these are both going to be the standard representation of SU2. In other words, V equals W equals C2. Okay, so let's pick bases and I'm going to I'm going to keep the bases labeled by E and F even though they're the same vector space just for clarity. So our basis for the tensor product is um, E1 tensor F1. So E1 and F1 are both going to be the vector 1, 0. And E2 and F2 are both going to be the vector 0, 1. But I'm just keeping E and F as, as different labels to, just for convenience. So there's E1 tensor F1, there's E1 tensor F2, there's E2 tensor F1, and there's E2 tensor F2. So that's our basis of a four dimensional vector space. Okay, what was R of G? Well, what was G? G was some matrix A, B minus B bar, A bar. And because R is the standard representation, this was just saying, a, B minus B bar, A bar goes to the matrix A, B minus B bar, A bar. So, and, and S is the same. Uh, what does that mean? Well, when I have a matrix like this, if I apply it to a basis vector, let's say E1, I get the first column. If I apply it to E2, I get the second column as a vector. So for example, um, A, B minus B bar, A bar, E1 is the vector A minus B bar, which is A lots of the first basis vector E1 minus B bar lots of the second basis vector E2, for example. So let's figure out what is R tensor S of A, B minus B bar, A bar applied to the vector, let's say E1 tensor F1. Let's unpack this. We let, using the definition, we let this matrix here act on E1 and on F1, and we tense the results together. So A, B minus B bar, A bar on E1 is given by A, E1 minus B bar, E2. And I'm tensoring that with A, B minus B bar, A bar acting on F1. Well, that's the same calculation. F1 is the same basis vector, but I'm writing everything as an F instead of an E, so I get A F1 minus B bar F2. I could have used the same letter, but I didn't, just to maintain consistency with the earlier notation. What is this? Well, we now multiply out brackets. So we get A times A times E1 tensor F1. So A squared E1 tensor F1. And then we get um, A times minus B bar times E1 tensor F2. Then we get minus A B bar E2 tensor F1. And finally, B bar squared E2 tensor F2. Okay. So what does that mean in terms of our representation? Well, R tensor S of A, B minus B bar, A bar is a four by four matrix. It's acting on this four dimensional space whose basis is E, I tensor F, J. And we're computing its value on the first basis vector. So this is actually the first column of our matrix, our four by four matrix. The first entry will be A squared, the second entry will be minus a b bar. The third entry will be minus a b bar. And the fourth entry will be b bar squared. Okay, so you can figure out the second column by applying this to E1 tensor F2. I'm assuming I've ordered our basis in this way, so this comes second. You can figure out the third column by applying it to E2 tensor F1. And the final column by applying it to E2 tensor F2. So that'll be an exercise. And then this is this four by four matrix is 
the representation, the four dimensional representation of SU2. It turns out this particular one is also not irreducible, so this is not the one we want, but we've come quite a long way. We've got a lot of new representations. So because we started with a two dimensional representation and a three dimensional representation, we can tensor together any number of those that we want so we can get any representation of dimension two to the something times three to the something else. But they're not necessarily irreducible. So we, again, we're going to need to work a bit harder to get something irreducible. So the thing that's going to work is actually taking a sub-representation of the tensor product. So here's the definition. This is the third example. This is called a symmetric power. So I just start off with one representation, GL in GLV, and I take its nth tensor power. We've just constructed that. It's a representation on V tensor, V tensor V n times. And then I observe this is not irreducible because I'm gonna produce for you a sub-representation consisting of symmetric tensors. And this will be an irreducible representation, at least for uh, SU2. So let me start by doing an example. This same example we had before, let's take the standard representation of SU2 tensored with itself. You can see E1 tensor E1 is symmetric. If I switch the two factors, I get the same vector. E2 tensor E2 is symmetric. If I switch the two factors, then I get the same vector. E1 tensor E2 is not. If I switch them, I get E2 tensor E1. But if I add these two guys and simultaneously switch the factors in the first and the second monomial, then what I get is E2 tensor E1 plus E1 tensor E2, which is the same as the one on the previous line. So these three guys are symmetric. This one, E1 tensor E2 minus E2 tensor E1 is anti-symmetric, and we'll talk more about them at a later time. So it turns out this is a sub-representation. These three vectors span a sub-representation um, of C2 set to C2, and this will be called SIM2 of C2. So how does this work? Well, given any tensor like this, I can produce something symmetric. So let's do an example for C3. Uh, let's, let's suppose we've got a C3 just as a vector space. Forget about representations for a moment. It's got a basis E1, E2, E3. Let's take this vector E1 tensor E2 tensor E3 and let's try and produce something symmetric under permutations of the three entries. Well, I'd have to add E2 tensor E1 tensor E3 because I'm certainly allowed to switch those two. Uh, I'm also allowed to switch these two, the last two, so I'd need to add e, uh, sorry, E1 tensor E3 tensor E2. I'm also allowed to switch the first and third one. So I need to add E3 tensor E2 tensor E1. And I also, I'm able to just cyclically permute them. So I could do E2 tensor E3 tensor E1 or E3 tensor E1 tensor E2. And that's it. There are only six permutations of three things. So I claim this combination of these three vector, the three tensors, is um, symmetric under permutations. And just for good measure, because there's six terms here, I'm going to divide by six. So if I give you a tensor like this, there's a canonical way to make it symmetric. Uh, 
which is this averaging procedure I've just shown you in this example. So we define an averaging map from V tensor N to V tensor N. This was the example of C cubed tensor three. Now, what is this averaging map? Well, if I apply it to V1 tensor V2 up to Vn, it's just the sum of, well, let's say one over n factorial of the sum over permutations of n things of V sigma one tensor V sigma two tensor up to V sigma n. Okay, that's just a fancy way of saying you permute all the possible indices here and sum over all possibilities. So definition, sim n of V is the image of the averaging map from V tensor n to V tensor n. In other words, it's the set of all averaged tensors. They're all going to be symmetric by construction. So I want this to be a sub-representation if, if V is a representation. Um, and the way I'm going to show that is I'm going to show first that the averaging map is a morphism of representations from V tensor N to V tensor N. And then I'm going to show that the image of a morphism of representations is a sub-representation. So this will give us a sub-representation of V tensor N. In particular, that will show us V tensor N is not going to be irreducible. What is a morphism of representations? Well, remember, it's a map L from V to W such that if I've got a representation um, on V and a representation on W, then L intertwines those representations in the sense that um, R, G, so R is happening on V. So I have to post compose with L and that's supposed to be equal to uh, S, G composed L. That's what it means to be a morphism of representations. So in other words, for this averaging map, we're trying to show that the averaging map of R, G, this is tensor N applied to V1 tensor V N, equals RG tensor N applied to the averaging map of V1 tensor tensor VN. And we can check this using this formula for the averaging map. So let's just do it. Um, if I apply RG tensor N to this V1 up to VN, that's giving me RG of V1 tensor RG of V2 tensor RG of Vn and if I do this averaging procedure this just gives me 1 over n factorial of sum over the permutations of Rg V sigma 1 tensor tensor Rg of V sigma n just permuting the different uh, factors in this tensor product. On the other hand, if I do RG tensor N applied to the averaging map, this is RG tensor N applied to one over N factorial times the sum over permutations of V sigma one tensor dot 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 tensor V sigma N, which by definition of the tensor product is just one over N factorial of RG applied to V sigma one tensor dot 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 tensor RG of V sigma N, which is exactly, oh, there's a sum there, which is exactly the same. So just by expanding both sides, we see that the averaging map is a homomorphism, uh, sorry, a morphism of reps. Okay, now we want to show that the image of a morphism is a sub-representation in this case of V tensor N.
Well, let's prove this more generally for any morphism L. So if L is a morphism from a representation R on V to a representation S on W, then the image of L is just the set of vectors of the form LV, where V is in V. So to prove that this is a subrepresentation, we need to apply RG, oh, sorry, SG, uh, to uh, a vector of this form, LV. So remember, this lives in, in W. So we have to apply SG to that. And using the fact that this is a represent morphism of representations, we can move the L past SG, but the SG then turns into an RG. So we get L of RG of V, and that's exactly saying that SG of LV is in the image of L. So if we start with something in the image of L, we end up with something in the image of L. So that says the image of L is a subrepresentation. So in the case uh, of the symmetric power, that's telling us that sim n of v is a representation. It's a subrepresentation of v tensor n. Let's just do an example of, uh, you know, take v to be the standard representation of SU2. And let's take its nth symmetric power. Let's do its third symmetric power. What's a basis for this? Well, it has E1 tensor E1 tensor E1, that's symmetric. If we start with E1 tensor E1 tensor E2, then you know the averaging map is going to add in things like E1 tensor E2 tensor E1 and E2 tensor E1 tensor E1, and we'll end up with a 1 over 3 of these guys. In other words, everything will appear twice and we'll have a 1 over 6 simplify things. Similarly, we get 1 over 3 E1 tensor E2 tensor E2 and all the possible permutations of that. Uh, oops, that's not a direct sum, that's just a add. And finally, we have E2 tensor E2 tensor E2. So this is a four-dimensional representation, and it turns out this one will be irreducible. So you can label the elements here as polynomials. So let's call this one E1 cubed. Let's call this one E1 squared E2. Let's call this one E1 E2 squared, and this one E2 cubed. All right, so given a polynomial like this, there's a basically a unique way of turning it into a symmetric tensor. Um, so you can think of sim n of um, a vector space V is like polynomials of degree n, that is homogeneous polynomials of degree n in a basis of V. Okay, so from that we can see this is four dimensional. There are four possible polynomials, and it's actually not hard to show that sim n of the standard representation of SU2 is n plus one dimensional. Just think about the polynomials you'd need to write down. And that's going to give us um, a representation for each dimension. So these will turn out to be irreducible and they'll turn out to be the ones that I was calling Rn um, in the previous video. Actually, Rn minus one, I guess. So Rn will be sim n minus one C2, that's what I mean.